we have this 12 church members. Uh, before we begin the Sabbath school program, let's sing a few songs. Uh, for the first song, we shall sing, Shall We Gather a Woman?
morning everyone and a very happy sabbath to all of you i would like to continue this sabbath school program with a text isaiah 41 10 it says that fear thou not for i am with thee be not dismayed for i am thy god i will strengthen thee i will help thee and i will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness with this thought i would like to welcome all of you for this sabbath school program i hope you all will be blessed out of this thank you uh, god is good all the time his grace is always sufficient for us even in the times of trouble so god is ready to protect us and guide us in whatever situation we face so with this thought i welcome you all for this sabbath school program so for our opening song let's sing in number 526 because he lives taken from Matthew 15:21 to 28 Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon and behold a woman of Cana came out of the same coast and cried unto him saying have mercy on me o lord thou son of david my daughter is grievously vexed with a devil but he answered her not a word and his disciples came and besought him saying send her away for she crieth after us but he answered and said i am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of israel Then came she and worshipped him saying Lord help me but he answered and said it is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs and she said truth lord at the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table then jesus answered and said unto her o woman great is thy faith with it unto thee as even as thou wilt and her daughter was made 
whole from that very hour happy sabbath everyone shall we all sing the lord in prayer heavenly father we thank you for this beautiful sabbath day and the time you have given us to come to your presence we thank you for all the love and care and the protection that was bestowed upon us throughout this week father as we are entered into the sabbath as we continue in meditation of your word and scriptures be with us lord as we are going to render the sabbath school service we pray that your presence will be upon us lord i pray for all the participants may they all be blessed abundantly may the scriptures which they are going to share with us the nature talk whatever the service they are going to do let it be a blessing to all of us lord i pray that this entire sabbath service will be a blessed one for all of us lord i pray for all the people who are listening may they all hear your word to the participants who are taking up the program lord once again father in heaven we submit and surrender ourselves under your feet bless us abundantly lord in jesus name we pray amen good morning and happy sabbath today's missions report is titled crawling like a baby it is about a woman called omu tore omu fell terribly ill after the death of her husband she had her knee swollen that she could not walk she lived in a home with her uncle who used to take her to many different doctors but no one could help her he even took her to some witch doctors but they even could not help her she lived in the home of her uncle with her younger sister and few other relatives four long years passed she remained the same she could not walk for four long years one day as she was sitting in her home in the bed she heard a visitor come to their home she heard, overheard the visitor reading from the bible and praying and though omu was not a christian she wanted someone to pray for her very badly she gained up a lot of strength and crawled out of bed and went to the place where the visitor was sitting and he pleaded and she pleaded with him to pray for her the visitor whose name was tranquil was astonished at the sight of an old woman crawling that he immediately left 3 days later tranquil returned to her home and he said that he was going to pray for her omu was filled with joy as he heard tranquil read from the bible and pray for her he later revealed that he had been fasting for 3 days and prayed for omu he came the next day and prayed for omu again he continued for 2 long weeks One day out of a sudden Omu asked about Tranquil's church Tranquil who belonged to an Adventist church said that he would take her to the church next week the coming saturday morning Tranquil helped Omu out of bed and took her on his own motorcycle to the church and he did that the next week as well even the next every day Omu started getting stronger and on the fourth sabbath Omu walked to church by herself Tranquil was amazed to see the recovery of Omu and praised God for the miracle that had taken place in the life. Meanwhile, Omu's ha- Omu's uncle was very upset about her attending to a church though he was very happy for her recovery. So one day Omu's uncle held up two books, one the Bible and another book their religious book and he asked Omu to choose from this Omu immediately thought about her four long years of sickness and remembered that how she had recovered after she had accepted Jesus and she chose the bible after that omu's uncle required asked her to preach to them from the bible omu not having an education could not read the bible and therefore with tears filled in her eyes she said i cannot preach to you Omu immediate Omu's uncle immediately ordered the family members to pack Omu's belonging and she was sent out of home. Omu not having a place to live lived in various friends homes and it was very hard for her but still she did not denounce Jesus and continued to follow him. After the church members heard that Omu had not a, ha, did not have a place to live they offered her up a place in the church where she lives today. We see that though many people struggle these days they are willingly and steadily following Jesus so let us give our tithes and offerings so that we may help many people like this out there amen I was working in town one afternoon attending some business affairs 
I heard a commotion a couple streets over Wondered what's happening there A young man was running from in that direction And stopped just to catch his breath I asked him to please tell me what was the hurry He smiled up at me and he said I was trying to catch the crippled man Did he run past this way? He was rushing home to tell everyone What Jesus did today And the mute man was telling myself And the deaf girl he's leaving to answer God's call it's hard to believe, but if you don't trust me As a blind man, he saw it all As a blind man, he saw it all So my friend, if the troubles and burdens you carry Are heavy and dragging you down You've tried everything you could possibly think of There's no relief to be found That very same Jesus that altered the future Of the blind, the deaf, and the lame Is still reaching out in your hour of trouble One touch and you'll never the same Trying to catch the crippled man Did he run past this way? He was rushing home To tell everyone what Jesus did today And the mute man was telling myself And the deaf girl he's leaving to answer God's call it's hard to believe, but if you don't trust me As the blind man, he saw it all As the blind man, he saw it all He saw it all Good morning and happy Sabbath. I hope you all are doing well and I thank the Lord for this opportunity to share a little something with you all. Well, over the past few months, I have been learning something and that's what I'm going to be sharing with you all. Uh, I have been reading the book Adventist Home and one thing has again and again been, you know, coming to my attention as I read the book. Now, I'm sure that all through our childhood, and all through our youth and you know our uh, adulthood many of us if not all have been taught over and over the topic of love how we are to be loving and lovable Christians now when we hear the word love the first thing that comes to our mind I'm sure is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 love is this and love is that and love is patient and kind and all those things but as we go about life, I have realized that sometimes our understanding of love can be quite shallow and not deep. So I personally did not realize how to apply these things in our life. How do I, you know, become a loving and lovable Christian? And over the past few months, being cooped up inside the house with a lot of family members around, I have learned valuable lessons on love and those are the lessons that I thought I should be sharing with you all. Sometimes it can get hard living with four to five people in the same house or maybe just three or four. The whole family being together for 24 hours, seven days a week can get tiresome and sometimes can really get on our nerves. But how are we to be as Christians and deal with this situation? Sometimes parents can get irritated with the children, children get irritated with the parents, and all these things can happen. So how are we to deal with this? So let's take a look. Number one, we see that love is kind. 
in other words love is kind and courteous or not rude it is very easy for us to speak rudely with our family members parents can speak rudely with our children when you know we get irritated or children can speak rudely with our parents when we don't you know agree with the things that they say or we are irritated and all those things but as a christian we need to learn to be kind and courteous in many christian homes or even in our home i realize that courtesy is something that does not exist when parents tell us to do something we just do it and there's no thank you or when parents do something for us we don't say thank you immediately or there's no please said but as christians those have to come automatically to us please thank you and soft tones have to be used if you read the book adventist home over and over god tells us how we are to be soft spoken so let us learn to become kind in whatever we do the way we speak to each other be kind and courteous even within the family next is to be patient love is patient sometimes it is the hardest thing to be patient with each other you know when someone says something or when someone takes a lot of time doing something or something does not go right it's so hard to be patient but we need to learn to be patient and to be uh, of a right mind when we do it not getting angry or irritated the next thing is we are to be slow to anger love needs is slow to anger in other words we should not get irritated so easily in these past few months as we have been living as a family together i have realized that i can get irritated very very quickly when things don't go my way or when someone is saying something or when someone is being a little too loud i can get very irritated or maybe i'm trying to record something or i'm trying to make a talk or i'm trying to study the bible and someone there you know is talking loud or something is happening we tend to get irritated very quickly but that is something we need to learn to control with the spirit of god so we need to not only learn to be slow to anger but learn to not get irritated next is we need to learn to appreciate love appreciates the one thing i have learned in this past few months is how little you know some the little things of life are appreciated when people do things for you maybe your mother cooks every day for you and we don't appreciate her how many of us have gone at the end of the day or at the end of a meal and told our mother or whoever cooks thank you for cooking me this meal thank you for making me this tasty food you know not only would it uh, you know uh, uplift our uh, mood but also it would encourage the person who is cooking you know giving them a new motivation to cook and you know making them much much more cheerful the next is love keeps no records of wrong in other words sometimes when we uh, are wronged or someone does something that we don't like we tend to hold a grudge for quite a long time but we need to learn to be forgiving not holding a grudge i have seen many instances within the family or outside the family when something goes wrong it has taken years for us to speak to each other again and that should not be there as christians we need to easily forgive and we need to love them more so even it can be with our children we need to learn to be more loving and the last one is we love perseveres we need to persevere sometimes correcting a person or helping a person change a certain wrong habit can take quite a time but we need to learn to be persevering in our love to be patient with them and to give them the time to change to love them more to give them more attention and pray for them more so these lessons i thought as i kept reading reading this adventist home over and over it is again and again said in our thoughts in our actions in our words and even in our tone we are to be soft we are to be loving ellen white even writes even in the way we look 
you know sometimes when we look at our children we sometimes frown or even with our parents it is so easy for us to you know stare back at them or you know this have this angry look on our faces when we are irritated you know it's so easy to you know for example for me if i get angry i easily do why are you doing this you know that whole thing comes it's so easy to become irritated like that and to show those expressions but even in our expressions our tone we have to learn to become soft and tender and loving and kind so imagine how we will be as christians if we are in every situation loving calm tender kind and courteous to each other we will become such loving and lovable christians and show the world of what it is to be a christian soft and show the world this is how christ's character is imagine christ as a child or as an adult how he would have been very kind and tender even when people slapped him he did not even in expression show that he was irritated or angry when people spat on him if someone slapped us i'm sure immediately you would see it on our face the irritation and the anger but christ did not show that and we can be like him with the help of his spirit so today i encourage you to read more on what love is so that we may implement it in our lives in our day to day relationships with our children with our parents with whatever relationship we have we would be loving and more soft and tender and kind and thus reflect in whatever way we can the love of jesus so i encourage you to study more on love and to share the love of god with others through our actions and our deeds and our expressions to reveal the love of jesus good morning and happy sabbath for today's nature talk i'm going to talk about the large bird eagle the total life span of an eagle is 70 years and at the age of 40 the wings become heavy and thick and its beak bends so in order to live for another 30 years the eagle has to go through the process of rebirth it goes to the peak of a mountain there it knocks its beak against a rock until it plucks it out and during this process of rebirth the eagle go through a lot of pain and agony but at the end of the process the eagle get a chance to live for next 30 years even in our lives we have to go through the same process like this eagle and this process is called as sanctification in every walks of life day in and day out we have to go through this process of sanctification because sanctification is not a one day process it's a lifetime process till the second coming of jesus christ our hearts and our mind should be sanctified then only we can reflect the character of christ unless and until we don't reflect the character of christ we cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven so in order to attain this eternal life we have to reflect the christ character so only we can reflect christ character is going through this process of sanctification when you read when you pray god will send holy spirit to understand the bible and the spirit of prophecy and the more we read bible and spirit of prophecy the more we confess the more we get closer to god and the more we get closer to god our lives become sanctified life and we can reflect his character 
थैंक यू Good morning church and a very happy sabbath so happy to see you all through this online worship program and i welcome you all for this lesson study we are in the ninth lesson today of the third quarter the topic for today's lesson study is developing a winning attitude so before getting into the study let us have a word of prayer offered by dr ellen shall we pray 
Our Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful Sabbath morning. Thank you for all the ways in which you have blessed us. Thank you for keeping us and our families and our church safe from all the things which are going around us. At this moment, as we have gathered again here to study from your word, we pray that you will open up our hearts and minds so that we will be receptive to whatever is given for us, Lord. We pray that you will speak. We pray that you will help us to listen. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Developing a winning attitude. The memory text for us comes to us from the book of 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 15. But sanctify the Lord with your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you for the reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. The more we study about Jesus and his life, and the more we marvel at his ability to accept and affirm people. Although he rebuked the religious leaders and other people in his days, he still gladly received those who were struggling with sin, plagued with guilt and hopelessly condemned. His grace was for them. His mercy extended even to the vilest sinners. The depth of his forgiveness was infinitely deeper than the depths of their sins. His love had no bounds. None had fallen so low of his grace that could not reach him. He showed respect to all who came in contact with him and he treated them with the dignity that they deserved. He influenced people for his kingdom because he believed in them. Their lives changed because of his presence. And this week's study, we are going to see few of the characters of how God's attitude towards them changed them and the perception of the people, how they looked at them. We'll examine his attitude toward even those who seemed the least interested in his message. We will review how he approached the Samaritan woman, the Canaanite seeker, and a woman whose reputation was severely spoiled. In each instance, Jesus looked for the best. He presented the truth, but in love. That is the main theme of our lesson study today, of how we are going to present the truth. Is it with love or is it with condemnation? The foundation of his message was acceptance, forgiveness, grace, and the hope of a new life. Jesus, he never minimized the value of the truth, but he always presented truth in redemptive ways. In this week's lesson, we'll discover how to apply Jesus' methods in our witness today. So moving on to Sunday's lesson, we are going to see how the Samaritan woman was changed by God and because of her, how the entire city of Samaria came to know about Jesus. The topic for Sunday's lesson is receptivity to gospel. So let us turn our Bibles to the book of John chapter 4 starting from verses 27 through 30. You know, the people of Samaria were underlooked by the Jews. It is because of two reasons. Because the Samaritans, they wanted to take part in the building of the Temple Jerusalem, but they were not given the opportunity because they had their intermarriage with other heathen cultures around them and they had unorthodox views. So because of this, as a result, they built their own temple in Mount Gerizim. So the disciples, they, they always looked the city of Samaria as an unfertile ground to sow the seeds of God. And so they always bypassed. So when John narrates the story of this Samaritan woman, he starts with this verse telling that Jesus was on the way from uh, Judea to Galilee, but he had to enter, he needed to enter Samaria because the Holy Spirit spoke in Jesus' heart telling that there are receptive hearts that will need to receive your words. So that is when Jesus enters the city of Samaria and then we all know the story what happened. The Jacob's well, the conversation between Jesus and the Samaritan women. 
um, in Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse 1. Akka, do you remember the verse? Cast thy bread upon the waters and you will find it after many days. Many days, yes. So after many days. So Jesus had sown the seeds and it was during the time of Philip. We read in Acts chapter 8 telling that the city of Samaria accepted the word of God. So when God just sowed the seeds and because of this one woman, the entire city was um, accepting the truth. They were coming to know who God was. God did not restrict his gospel or his teachings only to Jews. But it is when the uh, news had started to spread with the Gentiles also. And we also see in the later part of the verse that God stayed another two more days in Samaria the people who were unreachable and they were reached by the word Jesus. of God. Yes, we will not always see immediate results. Right, Akka? Yes. When we witness. Today, when we may be a witness to many people, but for us to witness, it takes an entire course of time for us to witness who God is and what he has done for us. But as we sow the seeds to receptive hearts, one day, definitely it's going to bring a Amen. plenty of harvest. We never know for sure how our words or, or our actions will have an impact on others. But definitely it will one day impact. So moving on to Monday's lesson, Akka, an attitude adjustment. Thank you, Debo. An attitude adjustment. The Monday's lesson is entitled so. Very often we see that we either attract people or chase people away from us because of our attitude. Uh, may it be our family, our friends, the place we work. People relate to us depending on our attitude, right? Yes. When we are kind, when we are loving, even if we are lying, people tend to believe us. And when you are hard, angry and rude to them, even if you speak the truth, People don't want to listen to you. They just want to go away because you're rude, you're hard. So in soul winning, our attitude really has a very, very big role. Our attitude as a person, as a Christian, as the entire church, what is our attitude towards people who are in seek of truth? Now our only example is Jesus. And let us see a few instances how Jesus reacted. What was the attitude of Jesus when he had to encounter people? For example, in Monday's lesson, here is a context given in Matthew chapter 15 verses 21 to 28. And it talks about the Syrophoenician women, the Canaanite women. Now this instance takes place when Jesus was traveling from Capernaum. Now Jesus had a very bitter experience in Capernaum. The Pharisees had totally rejected him. They were plotting to kill Jesus and so Jesus had to move, move away from them because his time had not yet come. So he was traveling, he was going away from Capernaum towards Galilee and as he was traveling he saw those great cities of Tyre and uh, Sidon there on the east and towards the west was the great Mediterranean Sea and as he was traveling he himself placed he placed himself in this route of this Phoenician city the spirit of prophecy says it was by purpose that Jesus and his disciples walked through the streets of this Phoenician city so God had a purpose uh, in at that time in putting them in this way and there, here comes this Canaanite woman. Now she had a problem. Her problem was that her daughter was sick for many, many years. And in this small city of Phoenicia, there were many Jews who were living along with this Canaanite woman. And the tidings about Jesus being the super healer, the master healer, the man who healeth all kinds of disease, the prophet who speaks and who touches and you're healed. You know, these kind of uh, news was being circulated in the city. And so this woman gathered all her courage to come and meet Jesus one day and make sure that she receives that blessing from this prophet so that her daughter will be healed. But she had this doubt in her mind that she was a Canaanite. Now according to Jews, they were looked very down because they were idolaters. Uh, they worshipped many other gods like Baal, Elar, Lesson mentioned so many other gods, Aster, Ashrar. They worshipped these gods 
they considered them to be gods and goddesses of uh, vegetation fertility of harvest and uh, they also worship the dead and therefore jews abhor these canaanite people they considered them totally outcast down they considered they looked upon very down upon them and when this woman approached jesus uh, the attitude of jesus was it friendly no no it was not friendly jesus walked as though he did not hear anything jesus walked just walked this woman was not uh, put down by the attitude of jesus she went about she went behind him pestering pestering him going on asking him the same request and uh, it's amazing to see how this heathen woman this canaanite woman this idolater addresses jesus she calls him master thou son of david that means she already knew who he was with this knowledge she comes to jesus and the disciples had this bias they had this barrier towards the syrophenician woman and they were trying to put her off and when they saw that jesus was trying to avoid her uh, you know they uh, their inner strength gave them more power to put this lady off jesus was doing all this to teach his disciples that nobody is put away in the front of in the eyes of god we are all equal there is no caste no religion which can separate us god has created us in the same flesh and blood and we are all equal and after repeated requests by this woman and even after the disciples uh, uh, turning her away several times jesus turned towards her and she and he said is it lawful to cast the bread of the children to dogs can you imagine the plight of this poor canaanite woman you go to somebody for a help the person helps you or doesn't help you is different but what if that person treats you badly calls you a dog if any one of us were there we would have just walked away right all of us would have done that do you know what this woman said she replied saying ye lord that means she saying yes lord i am a dog but do not the little dogs under the table eat from the crumbs which fall down from the table jesus was so impressed with this with this answer that he said great is thy faith o woman and wherever wherever i go wherever the gospel is preached this story this story of your great faith will be announced will be preached jesus had two things to be taught here the first thing is he strengthened the faith of the women second thing is he wanted to teach the disciples the great mystery which was hid for centuries and that mystery is salvation is not only for jews desire of ages uh, lesson 43 barriers broken down it says so it, it's very beautifully given here and i would like to read it for you it says so jesus longed to unfold the deep mysteries of the truth which had been hid for ages that the gentile should be fellow heirs with jews and partakers of his promise in christ by the gospel and she goes on to say cast is hateful to god he ignores everything of this character in his sight souls of all men are of equal value so here even though the attitude of jesus was totally different we see that this was by purpose he wanted to strengthen the faith of this canaanite woman and as will teach his disciples about the way to go with the gospel it is not only for jews but it is also for the gentiles after the story the lesson talks about uh, mary magdalene who who sins were forgiven and she felt the sense of gratitude in those days in the jewish culture culture it was their custom to embalm the body of dead people with uh, perfume and you know uh, things which uh, which are costly ointments and spices so when people were talking that jesus is going to be killed by the uh, jews jews were plotting to kill jesus it 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 pained it struck her heart she was so grateful to jesus that he had forgiven her sins she was a very bad woman the entire society looked upon her uh, with a very 
uh, they looked down upon her. But only after her encounter with Jesus, her life changed. She repented. She changed completely. Her brother, dear brother Lazarus came back to life because of Jesus. And she was so grateful to him. And she thought, what is the purpose of going and anointing the body of Jesus after his death? Let me do it now. Let me show my gratitude now. And she opened up this costly box of alabaster, poured it on his head. She tried to do it as secretly as possible at the house of Simon. But the, uh, but the fragrance of the perfume was so strong that everybody in the room could. And everybody criticized her. Judas, the treasurer of the entire team of Jesus and his disciples, openly criticized her saying this could have been sold for 300 pence and this money could have been used for poor. But Jesus rebuked them and saying, great is this faith. Wherever the gospel is preached, this will also, this story will also go with the gospel. Here we see that Jesus showed his love towards a woman who was trying to show her gratitude. Even though the attitude was different, Jesus was only trying to teach them a lesson that no man is different. We are all equal in the sight of the Lord. I have a question for you, Akka. How do you justify Jesus' attitude? towards Mary Magdalene because the attitude what he had toward the Canaanite women was different and the attitude what he had toward Mary Magdalene was different. When we read the story, in, when we read the account of Matthew in chapter 15, it might look that the attitude of Jesus was totally indifferent towards the Canaanite women. But actually this attitude was a straight rebuke to the Pharisees and to the disciples. He was only trying to teach them that you cannot treat people like this. He was trying to tell them that salvation is open for every human being. So by this attitude, he was only rebuking the Pharisees and Jews and he was not trying to put down the Canaanite women. This woman went st with her faith strengthened that day because of the attitude of Jesus. Moving on to Tuesday's lesson, presenting the truth in love. The perfect example for this topic that is presenting the truth in love comes to us from the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verses 1 to 4. Here we see some of the most distinguishing characteristics of the church in Thessalonica. Here Paul he significantly tells that the church in Thessalonica was growing in four different qualities. Paul is a well distinguished man who was living in those days he had this ability to see the good only the good though it may be bad but he had this attitude of seeing the good amongst the bad so in the church of Thessalonica as you open your Bibles and uh, read these words the four characteristics are their faith grew with exceedingly they had abounding charity toward each other. They remained patient and faithful in their persecutions and tribulations. How wonderful it is, right? When a church which had the faith exceedingly, it grows exceedingly day by day, abounding in charity and staying faithful and remaining patient during tribulation. How wonderful it will be. Same Paul in Acts chapter 17 and verse 11, he talks about another church in Berea. Those people who were there in Berea, they were much more, I mean much more strengthened than the people who were in Thessalonica. So I would like to read that from Acts chapter 17 and verse 11. The church in Berea were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind search the scriptures daily and those things were so they wanted to they wanted to reason they wanted to check whether is this it is this it is it true is it really true because even when paul had the transformation he did not believe but still after he went and testified himself when it happens to him when it happened like when God had direct encounter with Paul, that is when he realized that there is a true God. So that same thing what was happening with the church in Berea. And so in Thessalonica, we have 
these four characteristics and how beautiful it will be if these characteristics are seen in today's church right i i i would like to make this statement um from uh, sister ellen white's quotes on testimonies for church volume 9 and page 189 here she tells very clearly if we would humble ourselves before god and be kind and courteous and tender hearted and pitiful there would be 100 conversions to the truth where now there is only one amen how beautiful it is right when we have these characteristics that is when we grow in faith can you read it again for us yes if we would humble ourselves before god and be kind and courteous and tender hearted and pitiful there would be 100 conversions to the truth where now there is only one yeah. yes how true it is right when we apply these characteristics in our church so a church is comprised comprised of many people with different characters but when everything is put into one there will be a definitive transformation and it cannot be irreversible right okay so with these things in mind what do you think should be the attitude of the church or the church members when we encounter somebody who is socially or culturally different from us suppose we have a visitor and they are totally different uh, probably they are from some other culture or from a very backward socio economically backward community how do you treat them what should be our attitude as a church towards them okay i would like to tell you a story aka here there was this woman okay uh, who was um, living in a very cold country and it was during winter that uh, she had a very bad experience she was homeless um, she was rebuked by all the people who were around her she did not have a family she did she did not know where to go so down the street she was walking toward a she doesn't know where to go so she was just walking on the road and on the way she saw a seventh day adventist church and the light was on so she wanted to go inside and see what's happening because the lights were on so she went inside um she, uh, she saw that some cooking class was going on uh, since she as a woman you know we are we are all interested in cooking right so she as a woman she went inside and she found a place for herself in the back of the back of the hall where the cooking was going on and she was just um, sitting and seeing what was happening so after the cooking class there were a few ladies who were noticing what was happening with that lady and after some time what happened because she was tired she just pulled out her clothes and she sat she pulled her winter clothes down and then uh, she was just uh, taking some nap so after the thing was done few ladies approached her and then they gave her some of the cookings what they made that day and um, after taking it uh, they knew that something was wrong with her but they did not ask like where are you from what are you doing for your living nothing they asked they gave whatever they had some some ladies gave her food some shared the money what they had and then this lady looking after their kindness looking at their hearts she was not questioned like she was expecting that somebody would ask why are you here what are you doing here and uh, what is your purpose of visiting here uh, you are not supposed to come here you know these are the words which we tend to tell right to all strangers but these ladies they they had that intention of asking but they did not ask and so she went she went and then the next day she came back you know uh, and and un- this unfortunate women was fortunately met by these ladies and they s- slowly started a group and basically she was a pianist and that church was lacking a pianist you know and then she um, she uh, she was teaching them like how to play a piano and when they knew when the ladies of the church knew that she had some talent to exhibit they used her as a pianist so two years later she is one of the most active member of that church now she has a big church a, a lady who did not a homeless lady now she has an entire church as her Family. home right now how nice she would have felt that same attitude if we have is a question <laughs> do you think that we all have this attitude towards us maybe one or two but not all of us 
probably if we have a church would be filled with pianists yes <laughs> Going on to Wednesday's lesson, the foundation of acceptance. The lesson begins with two verses here, Romans 15, 7 and Ephesians 4, 32. I'm reading Romans 15, 7. It says, Receive ye one another as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Uh, in, in uh, direct similarity to the story which was just narrated, it says, Receive ye one another. As Christ also received us to God. Can you read Ephesians 4.32 for me? Be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Thank you. Be ye kind to one another, be ye tender-hearted, be ye forgiving okay. to one another. And why should we do that? Because Christ did for us. Because Christ did this for us and he has received us. God has received us because of Christ. Now, Apostle Paul here makes it very clear. The underlying principle of accepting each other, even, even though they are different, even though we are not similar, we are taught to accept each other just because Christ did it for us. And so we have no option. Can you think of something which you do and you dread the thought of others knowing that you do it? And you try to keep it secret. I'm talking about even a small cherished sin, which I know I do. And uh, even if I know that one person on this earth knows about it, I will tremble with fear. But I can hide it in the sight of man. Can I hide it in sight of God? Jesus knows all about it. Jesus knows all about it. And in spite of him knowing that I cherish this wicked sin in my heart, Jesus has accepted me. He has forgiven me. He has accepted me, not because of my good deeds, not because of my righteousness, but it is because of his righteousness. He has accepted me. Now, me being a follower of Jesus, we being the followers of Jesus, if Christ could accept each one of us with such severe character defects, with such imperfections, with such faults which we hide so secretly deep in our hearts, why is it so difficult for us to accept our fellow brethren? Why is it so easy for us to pinpoint, to push them out, to uh, put them down, to criticize, to give names, when we ourselves lodge such imperfect character defects within our hearts? Apostle Paul is being very clear. Accept ye one another just as Christ has received you unto God. Debo, do you have this uh, experience wherein you've met somebody or maybe there's somebody at home or at workplace or in the church as well. You just cannot tolerate that person. You just cannot stand him or her. They annoy you or they irritate you or their attitude troubles you so much that you just cannot stand. How do you deal with such kind of people? As a matter of fact, yes, I do. Because we are all humans, right? <laughs> all of us have at least, I mean, one stage or the other, we have to have such encounters yes, in us. That is because, I feel it is because that God wants us to reflect his character and he's testing us. That is how I would take. Because when we are tested, during that point of time, when you cannot stand it anymore, why is this person coming? I'm so getting irritated. He's standing on my nerves. When, when these thoughts are going on in our mind, there'll be a small voice talking to you, right? Calm down, calm down. This is not the right, right thing that which you're supposed to do. I would like to read you one uh, passage Akka, here. So the basis of all acceptance is gospel. Amen. Right? Treating others as Christ has treated us, it makes all the difference. Christ has forgiven us, so we have to forgive. Christ has showed his mercy upon us, so we are to show his mercy on others. Christ has loved us in spite of all our infirmities, and we are to love one to another. That is what Paul clearly tells us in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 32. Be kind, forgive each other, and strengthen each other, be tender-hearted, right? And uh, this text in Romans chapter 5, verses 6 to 10, a very familiar text for all of us, a text 
which is an eye opener it says christ died for us when did he die not when we were righteous christ died for us when we were sinners he reconciled us to god when we were still his enemies who crucified jesus it's me it was me and you and all of us when we were still sinners when we were still enemies with god it was christ who came and died for us and each person here christ died for each person how can we how can we okay so this concept of acceptance is very important because christ accepted us you know this atonement on the calvary is not just a remedy for sin it is a heaven given gift for you and for me and for each one of us so that we can get reconciled back with god and we need to use this gift of jesus so that we can reconcile with each other we can love each other i have a question for you akka do you think it is possible to accept a person with a sinful nature john 1334 would you like to read yes uh, john 1334 a new commandment which jesus gives to his disciples this is one of the last commandment which jesus gives to his disciples a new commandment i give unto you that ye love one another as i have loved you that ye also love one another we need to stop harboring the sharp criticizing uh nature within our hearts we need to let the love of jesus grow in our heart unless this love flows out of our heart it will be very difficult for each one of us to accept each other's mistakes now the attitude of jesus was very different he never said you can do whatever my child come to me i will accept you no that's not the attitude of jesus now there's a difference in accepting people you cannot say yes to every mistake and say jesus told me to love them you know jesus attitude was no matter what you have done come to me i will give you the power to overcome that was the attitude of jesus and so we as his followers need to follow the same uh, path we cannot accept sin we need to love the sinner but not accept sin on to thursday yeah that is what god tells when um, they were about to stone mary magdalene jesus said lady i forgive you go sin no more so accepting person and also make them to get rid of the sin what they are doing is that's how our attitude should, should be, be. Right, that's Akka? true repentance never repeat it again okay yeah on thursday's lesson the truth lovingly presented here we are going to see um how paul is uh, Uh, telling the three of his disciples i should say two of his disciples uh, more dedicated disciples timothy and titus to them how to uh, present the, the truth because they were all moving from one city on to another preaching the gospel so they had had to possess some attitude which the people will accept right so um here we are given three verses in first peter 3:15 2 timothy 4:2 and titus 3:4 and 5 so in all these three verses we read uh, in first peter 3:15 tells us answer to every man a ransom for hope with meekness and truth which is the memory text for this week in second timothy verse uh, chapter 4 and verse 2 we read reprove rebuke and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine yaka in titus 3 4 and 5 tells us about the kindness and love that we have to have toward our fellow men so that is all we have to present the truth when we are asked to preach somebody or somebody asks us why are you a christian and what is the point you in being a christian right what what our answer would be do you think that we are in a position to answer like why why am i a christian if somebody comes and asks you sister why you are a christian do you think any specific um character or do you get any blessing like what you do and all what our answer will be right it is only to reflect the character of christ jesus that is the main aim <coughs> of our living in this world and uh, i have a question for you akka so it is 
unfortunate that some people can make themselves feel better by pointing out on others faults right this i think um, we very often encounter as women we tend to uh, uh, yeah she does that mistake why don't i i mean she does that mistake appa good i did not do you know we have these character characteristics of i am better attitude exactly comparing ourselves with the sin that which they do and what is your opinion about it the very act of uh, finding fault or digging up to you know uh, to find an evil attitude in others the spirit of prophecy says that when we do that we develop that evil attitude i was actually uh, shocked when i read it uh, very clearly it says states in um, gospel workers page 479 it says the very act of finding fault with others the very act of digging out evil talking evil about others will help us to develop the same attitude within ourselves and the concept is simple we've all, we've all heard about this famous quotation in christ object lesson page 382 which says uh, by beholding we become like jesus here she emphasizes uh, on every christian to behold the face of jesus to look upon him and his character and when we do this we are changed and the principle applies vice versa also when we behold evil things when we behold uh, things which are wrong when we look at people to find fault a character becomes like them we develop those character imperfections for which we are looking of looking for uh it's very interesting to know that this term by beholding we become changed this term is used more than 23 times in the entire spirit of prophecy writing i was of the idea that it is only mentioned in christ object lesson page uh 355 but i was shocked when i saw that this term has been used in more than 19 books for more than 23 times and that was amazing this this phrase has gained so much of importance because it is so true it is so applicable what we behold we become so and now it is uh, up to us whether to you know uh pinpoint others uh, find faults criticize be more uh, critical sarcastic or to change our minds and behold jesus because by beholding we become changed there is another question here uh, where a friend has just written from funeral and he comes back home saying uh, i'm very happy that uh, that beloved person who's no more is in the right hand of jesus all her pains and sorrow and trials are over and she's happily in heaven with jesus now as bible believing christians as adventists we know that this is uh, doctrinally wrong because we have learned about the state of death but here this person believes and rejoices in his uh, agony now as an adventist what will be your attitude will you rebuke him and say no this is wrong this is what the bible says or how will you deal with the situation the same encounter i had when uh, i lost my mom okay the may 3rd on sunday she was uh, i mean she passed away and then the next day my relatives had come they are actually non adventist but they are christians so my they are my second cousins actually so my uncle and my grandmom everybody they are no more actually they passed away so my cousin sister she made this statement telling that um don't worry debo uh, we uh, you uh, as as christians we know that uh, mummy is right now in heaven uh, she is singing praises with god along with our uncle and uh, grandmom you know that moment though i was in deepest agony but at that moment i know that what she was telling is wrong and i had to correct her but that was not the time okay. you know still christian uh, non adventist they still have this idea that once people die they go to heaven directly and they are singing hosannas with god but with i that moment i prayed that god should reveal the state of dead to my uh, sister because as a sister it is my duty to tell what the truth is and she knows what it is but somebody has to 
tell about the state of dead yes. because we all know that the dead know nothing. nothing and they are still resting in the grave grave yes to put the entire to conclude the entire lesson let's put for just four sharp crisp points and the entire lesson is summarized in these four points the first point ask jesus to impress upon your heart that every person on this earth has a spiritual need yes every person has a spiritual need and they are winnable for christ the second point is develop a positive christ centered relationship with each other when the relationship with your fellow being is christ centered then it is always positive the third point is pray and seek for opportunities where you can share the truth as you rightly did you did not break up right then you know telling no the bible tells us and that was not right. that would not have been right pray and seek for opportunities wherein you can reveal and talk to them about the biblical scriptures the truth and the fourth thing is when you are presenting the biblical truth do it with all love no rebuke no criticism no hatred no arguments present the biblical truth with love love is the basis of all godliness when there is no love there is no god at all uh this uh, quotation from christ object lesson page number 386 is something uh which is very special very deep and i think this beautiful lesson the lesson which talks about an attitude which is necessary for winning souls to christ will be incomplete if i don't quote this it says no selfish practice can serve the cause of christ because the cause of christ is the cause of the poor and the oppressed if you cannot yeah. love your fellow being it is because there is no love, love in, you. in us and she goes on saying we being the professed followers of jesus christ need to develop this tender sympathy and deep love towards every human on this earth not just our friends our family our church member but she says every human on this earth, earth. and we need to value each person because christ has shed his blood and given his life for each person he values them so much so she says one precious soul that you bring to christ is much more valuable than any of the offering amen this soul will be will be of eternal value in any of the offering that we place on the altar love is the basis of godliness and whatever may be the profession if we do not have love there is no god and we cannot have this unselfish love towards our brethren if there is no christ within our heart we need to submit and merge ourselves with christ and when our self is merged with christ love springs up naturally do you remember the story of the canaanite women jesus himself placed jesus placed himself on the way of the canaanite women so that he will have an encounter with her we will no longer sit in our church and wait for people to come and reach us when this love of jesus springs in our heart we will be up on our feet we will go out seeking people who are sin sick we will go out with a message we will go out with love every impulse of the heart which is a heart which comes out every symbol every sign of love every attitude of sympathy it comes out because of the indwelling work of the holy spirit and it is our duty as a church as a family as a family we need to allow this working of the holy spirit within our hearts so that our attitude is changed we look at the world with a different attitude with an attitude of love with an attitude of jesus let christ be glorified let us reflect his character and win more souls for jesus uh, shall we close with a prayer our dear father thank you jesus for revealing us your truths to us as we behold you help us to become like you and help us to apply in our lives and help us to reveal your love to others not truth over love but the truth blended with your love help us to live according to what we preach in jesus name i pray amen let's sing hymn number 485 i must tell jesus
I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, He kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for His own. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus. Jesus, all of my troubles, He is a kind, compassionate friend. If I but ask Him, He will deliver, makes all my troubles quickly and end. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear. Jesus, I must have Jesus. Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Oh, how the world to evil allures me. Oh, how my heart is tempted to sin. I must have Jesus, and he will help me. Oh, Happy Sabbath. Let's all close our eyes for the closing prayer. Our most gracious Heavenly Father in Heaven, we thank you for this wonderful Sabbath, Lord. Lord, especially we thank you for the wonderful Sabbath School program. And especially we are praying for the participants to participate in all the programs. Lord, as we are entering into the divine service, bless us and guide us. Give us the wisdom, knowledge and understanding power from above to understand your words. Let us lead our life according to your words. Lord, even though we are in this pandemic period, you have safeguarded, safeguarded us from all harms and dangers. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lord. We are especially we are thanking for, uh, we are praying for all the church members. Guide, guide each and every one of them. We ask this few mercies in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's name. Amen.